Okay, folks, it's Thursday. We are at Bannockburn, um, just shortly outside of Stirling, Scotland. And this is actually um, Bannockburn. This is the stream, the Bannock. Um, and we have been sort of sussing out this spot as a possible place to come and uh, scramble some eggs, have a bit of a picnic because where we're staying in our room, there are no cooking facilities. But because we've been traveling for um, eight years, we always carry with us certain things. We carry with us cooking utensils. Um, then we just start taking some things out now. We carry things like this, bowls. Inside of here, this looks like it's authentic Greek yogurt, but it's not. Instead, these are sliced up leeks. And we're going to saute these in some butter. And then we're going to scramble eggs along with those. So that's what we're going to do there. And, um, wait. So we carry things, necessities that, because even when we were house sitting, um, many places we have no idea what sort of kitchen facilities they're going to have, what kind of pans, what kind of utensils. So for the past eight years, we've been carrying quite a lot of kitchen stuff with us because we like to cook. We always prepare our own meals. We hardly ever, ever go out to eat. So um, this enables us to um, have our own things and to be sure that we're going to have the utensils that we need. Anyways, we're really glorifying our loving Father as we were walking up to the spot just now. We are glorifying our lo loving Father for this day and um, you know just lifting him up he's so good to us and he's so good to all of his children and we're just so grateful you know our cup runneth over throughout these eight years we have been living nomadically and um, we literally left our apartment in Lewis East Sussex on the 16th of May so we are literally right at the eight year mark uh, we've been house sitting for the past seven years the first year we traveled down into France, we ended up, um, we spent some time in Lille in the north of France, went into Paris, um, did some couch surfing in Paris, and then we continued on south and ended up in well, southwest to Vichy. And we only planned to camp there one night. We were just en route to go to the south of France. And when we woke up the next morning, we realized that, wow, this is a beautiful campsite owned by a family, really nice campsite, nice trees. It was right by the Allier River, and it had Wi-Fi that reached right to the tent. We thought, why are we rushing away from here? So we ended up spending eight weeks in that campsite just outside of Vichy. So we would walk into Vichy pretty much every day or in the evening. Um, really nice town that, again, we knew nothing about really, except, you know, the World War II aspects of it. Um, but it was a really nice town. We came to really appreciate those eight weeks together. And then we carried on, um, ended up spending some time in Mombaziak, um, outside of Beersharak, and um, then headed down into, um, into Spain by, by way of Biarritz. And we stopped for an afternoon. We were so close. We saw these signs to be a Ritz and we thought, this is crazy. We never even intended on being here. So we just pulled over, found a, a place to park along the side of the road, grabbed our swimsuits and our towels, and we went down to the beach. And we had a beautiful afternoon swim out on this beautiful surf of Bia Ritz. Uh, so that was another gift from our loving Father. We had not even yet come to Christ, but we were very surely coming to faith. We were really like, there are miraculous things happening. God is already showing himself. He's taking care of us. And then we, anyways, we carried on to Spain. And we spent about seven and a half months in Borges. Um, and then we made our way back through the southwest of France and um, back into Bergerac, actually, for a few days. And then back to England, where I taught a, um, a creative writing class in Hastings right upon our arrival back to England. So that's a quick overview of the whole eight years we've been traveling, seven years house sitting, and I've just described that first year 
in the summer of 2012 through the spring of 2013. So some of this camping stuff, like these bowls we've been carrying with us for these eight years, um, this pan, these are things that we brought with us. And one of the nifty little things that has been such a joy to us over the past eight years is, here's a carton of eggs, another carton of eggs, is this little stove. This has been such an incredible thing. Look at how small it is. So we carry this in a gas canister pretty much wherever we go. And again, because we don't have cooking facilities in the room that we are in right now, we thought, well, let's go have a little hike and a little picnic and we'll scramble up some eggs. So I'm just gonna pull this out. It's amazing. It's only two pieces. It's only two pieces. It's so simple. Um, and we love the simplicity of this little thing. Literally, you just put this in here, screw it, boom, that's on. And um, this is a bit of a tricky thing because usually it's got a tab. And we've already used this a couple of times. But, Catherine, where are the... Um, Where's the silverware? There we go. When I put the top back onto the gas canister, it's really, really stubborn. So I have to get a have to get a knife, I think. Last time I pulled back my fingernail trying to get it off, and I don't want to do that again. Anyways, this is not something that you normally have to do. Okay, you normally don't have to do that. So, here's the stove top, that just slides on so easily like that, and then we just screw this on, and we've got an instant stove. When we were drinking coffee, which we gave up last August, this would be an essential thing for us to make a bialetti full of coffee, and we'd end up making beautiful lattes, but we've made cups of tea on the roadside uh, while we're on a long drive. We'd often pull over and have um, croissants and coffee, cup of tea with our lunch, whatever. Anyways, this is going to be our cooking source. And we're going to put that right there for now. And we're not going to film the entirety of this cooking process. It's not a cooking show. But we just want to let you know what we're doing here today. Take another look at this beautiful um, stream, this burbling stream. Our loving fathers, he always does, or pretty much always does, I have to say, opens up the sky. When we left the house this morning, it was dark. It was quite dark and cloudy, but our loving father so often just opens up the skies and he shines his light upon us. And it's really an amazing thing. So we're just going to start preparing this and we might film some of it as well. But I just want to encourage everybody, do not, do not assume a locked down mentality. The wicked forces of the enemy, the wicked one world order is trying to keep us at bay. They're trying to separate us behind glass screens and masks and face masks and resist that. It is the work of the enemy. Um, there's this virus pandemic is completely fake. Um, Go out to Andrew Kaufman's channel, Dr. Andrew Kaufman on YouTube. Watch the great discussion that we watched last night and we shared across all of our social media platforms last night um, between um, Dr. Tenpenny and um, Dr. Andrew Kaufman and a documentarian, I can't remember what her name was. Marcy Kravat. Marcy Kravat. Um, anyways, it came out on the 6th to the 7th of May um, is when it was uploaded to Andrew Kaufman's channel. But do check that out. It's one of the best discussions throughout this whole fake coronavirus pandemic, um, New World Order Takeover. Um, it's one of the best discussions, one of the best interviews um, that we've come upon um, throughout the time. And we've watched a lot of things. We've read a lot of articles, as many of you know. So do take a look at that and we'll check back later. Okay, folks. 
Here's the camp stove, and we've got the leak sizzling already. I've just put these on. Going to turn that down a little bit. Slow that operation down a bit. And over here we've got Catherine. Hello, Catherine. And she's preparing the eggs. So again, we're going to have scrambled eggs with a leak. And let's just take a look at this stream again. Unfortunately, there's a, a can there. Um, here's where we're actually sitting. It seems that this is... Right, there we go, that's much better. Okay, so here's the larger situation. We had spied out this little spot a few days ago and thought, ah, oh, this would be a, a good potential place to come out and have a, have a picnic. So let's go back here and check on the on the leaks. We want these to caramel caramelize nicely before we put the eggs in. Oh, we've also got a um, a nice thermos full of chai, homemade chai. Um, so in that we've got spring water, star anise. Um, black peppercorn, um, cardamom pods, black tea of course, um, ginger, and cinnamon, okay. and clove. So that's what we always put in our, our chai. And then we also add milk to it. So we're looking forward to having this. We've not eaten anything yet today, so this is going to be our breakfast and lunch. Okay, my sous chef has prepared the eggs right there. You can see we're steaming away here. Okay, I don't want to do the entire cooking process, but just to see, let you see that um, it's beginning to cook down and pretty soon we'll begin to caramelize. And we want it to really caramelize quite nicely so it'll be beginning to brown along the edges and some of the um, natural sugars will start to caramelize there. And here's some of the bread that Catherine sliced before we left. So um, that's gonna be tasty as well. So a very, very simple meal. Leeks with butter, eggs, really nice seeded bread that we just bought yesterday. Um, got a very good deal. We always look in the sort of half price bin um, to see if we can get um, we've gotten amazing deals we paid like 38p for one loaf that we bought yesterday like 78p for another loaf that we bought and maybe like 80 for the other one anyways it came out to virtually nothing last week in a completely different store we found um, three different loaves of bread all of which were scrumptious and in total we paid a pound for those three loaves of bread um, we always take advantage of these sort of um, late in the day offers when they start to mark down their breads if we can ever find them um, and usually God helps us to do so but it's a real a real boon when we can get some beautiful breads for so little money So I just want to encourage you again, folks, don't assume a lockdown mentality. Don't fall prey to the what the enemy is telling us. We are not meant to be locked down. God did not give us His Son, Jesus Christ. He didn't give us His Son, Jesus Christ, so that we would be locked down by the enemy. No, it is we who are meant to be loosing those who are bound by the enemy. We are not meant to be bound. Um, so I encourage you, get out, go and visit with people, talk with them. You're not going to get the coronavirus. Um, I really seriously doubt that there is any such thing as the coronavirus. 
but this pandemic is a complete lie, as we can tell. Pan means all, demic is, refers to people. Pandemic literally means all people, and we know that all people don't have this virus. I don't, haven't met one person yet worldwide who does. So anyways, that's all for now, folks. We'll check back in Okay, as you can see, these leaks are really cooking down. This was a whole sort of medium leak. Um, they're just beginning to caramelize and to brown up a little bit. That's pretty much just as we want it. Now we're just going to pour the eggs in. Okay, folks, I've just added the eggs to the leeks. First added a, a, another good wadge of butter. And I also just ground some black, fresh black pepper into the eggs and put some Malden sea salt, uh, which is a sea salt that we get here in England that we both really like and we cook with. And it's pretty much the only cooking and table salt that we use. It's really nice flakes of sea salt. Really, really good flavor. Anyways, um, everything else is set up, ready to go. Catherine, you can maybe pour out the, the chai. And that's it, folks. The sun is still out. It's looking beautiful, and we thank you for being with us. Okay, folks, we've just served it up. There's Catherine's plate it up. There's Catherine herself, and here's our cup of chai. The colors are not going to be right in the video, they never are, but it's a beautiful um, golden yellow. Um, this bread's going to be scrumptious, that tea is going to be scrumptious. And we just want to thank our loving Father. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this day that you have given all of your children, and in fact all of creation, dear Lord. We thank you so much for everything that you are. We thank you so much, dear Lord, for being the truth. I am so sick of the lies of this world, but I am so ever grateful that you are the everlasting truth, the truth that will never fade away, the everlasting truth. And I thank you for your righteousness and your judgment and your beautiful creation. I thank you for the free gift of salvation, dear Lord. I thank you for drawing Catherine and me to you over the course of our eight years of nomadic travels. I thank you for this meal, dear Lord. Thank you so much for your provision. Thank you for this meal. Thank you for the nutrition that it contains. Thank you for bringing Catherine into my life. And we thank you for this day, dear Lord. And we thank you so much for the On Fire for God Today ministry that you gave us as well. Um, it's such a joy to be ministering to folk all around the world, bringing them together and help doing what we can to inspire, to encourage, and to otherwise edify folk from all around the world, true Bible-believing Christians. And if there are any folks out there that are watching this video that are not part of the On Fire for God Today community, um, you'll find links in the description below. Um, link out, send your member request, and we'll keep an eye out for it, and you'll be with us very shortly. And if you've not done so already, Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching it. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. And we thank you so much, folks. Thank you for being part of this community and this family of true Bible believers. And in Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. Okay, folks. Well, um, just to show you that we're all packed up. That was the rock that I was sitting on and the other rock that I was cooking on and where Catherine was sitting. And we have to report that the, um, the eggs with the leek was scrumptious, absolutely scrumptious. It's not something we've ever done before, actually. Um, but we had bought some leeks and we bought some potatoes when we were thinking that we could perhaps find some sort of a cooking solution. And so we wanted to start making use of the leeks and the potatoes that we had bought. Um, and so we just thought we'll saute some leeks, put them in the eggs and with some salt and pepper and it came out absolutely perfectly really scrumptious and scrumptious with that bread and with the hot chai and here's one more shot of the bannock burn and we're going to continue on we're going to go ahead and go for a walk our bags are significantly lighter without the tea the tea is all gone the eggs are gone the butter is virtually gone and um, the leaks are gone. So with lightened bags, we're going to carry on. And again, folks, 
Um, we encourage you to glorify the Lord in everything you do. He is so good to all of his children. Let us always remember to lift him up, to glorify him. Um, many of us are struggling with things right now. Uh, I think people all around the world are struggling to earn their living, to get access to food, to um, just leave their house and get supplies or to go and see loved ones or to assemble in the church. But just remember, uh, whenever you're feeling down, think of all those things that we, are, um, we should be so grateful for. You know, our every breath, God has given us the perfect mixture of oxygen and just the perfect... Um, bodies that are self-healing and you know everything in this world that he created is so good and there's so much that we can be grateful for um, no matter how difficult the days are and we know those of us who are in, on fire for God today and Bible believing Christians um, generally speaking know that we are in for difficult days ahead they're only going to become more and more difficult as this new world order continues to clamp down upon us. But we must um, resist feeling locked down by it and rather just recognize that all these trials and tribulations are preparation for us to be with our loving Father in the next world, which is going to be truly righteous, wholly righteous, and that we have everlasting life, folks. Those of us who have come to Jesus Christ in faith and truth, we have everlasting life and there will be unimaginable um, riches and goodness in the next world. So let us keep our eyes set on that high calling. You know, let us keep our eyes focused on the end goal and let us glorify our loving Father for the remainder of our days in this world. And thank you so much for joining us here today, folks. And we love you, and we thank you for all of your support. And in Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray. I don't know how well you'll be able to make this out, folks, but really nice little bluebells here, and bluebells that are actually white, and these pink flowers, this little yellow poppy, this standalone little yellow poppy, which I think are called Welsh poppies, according to our neighbor in Manchester. And down here we've got buttercups. And actually there's another little yellow poppy. And more of the pink flowers down by the stream. Just a really nice area. Oh, there's a whole bunch of the yellow poppies right here. And down there by that tree don't know how well you'll be able to make them out on the video. And here's the burbling stream. And here's Catherine carrying her <laughs> boxes of eggs. <laughs> what are you doing with those boxes of eggs? Putting them in the bin. <laughs> We're using them as our little trash receptacles. Anyways, folks, we're continuing to walk along the Bannockburn. And we just spoke with an old man <clears throat> walking in the opposite direction and he was stunned and amazed that we just said that we had just cooked our breakfast or lunch further upstream a bit with a little camping stove. Um, I think as Catherine said, probably parts amazement that people are just going about doing normal things during this lockdown scenario. There's a part of everybody, I think, folks, that knows that we are being lied to. <clears throat> the people who are walking around with their face masks. I saw one woman about a week ago walking who actually was wearing two face masks. Other people are walking around wearing uh, those plastic shields over their eyes, it's really ridiculous. The grocery store checkout situation, every day we go in, something new has changed. And these plate glass windows that are separating us from the checkout folk, everything is meant to dehumanize us. This is all about 
us <coughs> distancing, our, distancing ourselves from one another. It's all about <coughs> keeping the divisions between us so that we don't talk, so we don't share information, so that we distance ourselves from our fellow human beings. It's all absolutely absurd. It's completely irrational. But people are just following suit because they have their eyes and their ears and their minds tuned to the mainstream media that has been lying to them throughout their whole lives, but they cherish those media. They don't want to admit to themselves that they have been lied to about everything all their lives. Science has been lying to us. The historians have been lying to us. The politicians have been lying to us. We've been lied to about everything. Anyways, folks, we're going to turn off the camera right now. And in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Okay, folks, this is the same day that we were having our lunch of scrambled eggs and leek over by the Bannock, the Bannock Burn, um, the little stream. And we decided to just keep walking along the trail. And lo and behold, completely unexpectedly, we actually ended up walking straight into the center of Sterling. And I have a little treat for folks who are fans of the King James Bible. On Fire for God today is a King James Bible, uh, Bible-believing ministry. And I just want to show you something here. This is in the center of Sterling, the Church of Scotland, Church of the Holy Rood. In this church, 1567, James VI, son of Mary, Queen of Scots was crowned, and John Knox preached. It's the former thing that I wanted to show you, that James VI is the king who is responsible for the King James translation of the Bible, and um, it says here that he was actually crowned here as an infant. Um, it says in the, about halfway through in 1567, the infant King James VI was crowned here by which time the church was a reformed um, was it a reformed place of worship. So bullet marks on the tower may date from a siege of the castle by Cromwell's troops in 1651. And, and so, VI yes, so King James VI, Catherine was just saying, was the James I um, King of England. So just want to show you that. We don't usually stop at places like this, but we literally just stumbled upon it as we were walking into Stirling, and we thought, okay, that's quite incredible that King James VI of the King James Bible was crowned in this church here in Stirling. So um, that's all for now, folks. We might just continue to walk around Stirling and see what else we stumble into. And again, we thank our loving Father for giving us oh so much. Um, our cup runneth over, even on this very day. And in Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. This is just up about 40 yards or so from where we were just filming the bit about King James VI. And this is clearly a bowling green at the top of Sterling. Interesting building right there. Okay, folks, this is the same this is the same church where King James the sixth was crowned as an infant. And this is an interesting building over here that they're just refinishing as well. Unfortunately, some folks have already put graffiti on one side of the, the building, but it looks like it's been beautifully done. And if we look across, see all these obelisks, probably of Freemasons. Freemasonry, unfortunately, is huge in Scotland just as it is in England. Look at all these obelisks. Look at the Egyptian pyramid right in the center of the frame. Freemasonry is huge in Scotland. These obelisks are Freemasonic symbols, just like that pyramid. And up there you can see the Stirling Castle, right at the very heights of town. We are almost as high as you can go in Sterling, and we'll continue to climb up there and check out how how close we can get without paying for any sort of admission. And I'm sure it's closed anyways. But 
let's just take, take a look at this along here and let me just show you the larger context those beautiful hills are just filled with gorse but the gorse is behind clouds so you don't see it so much right now these are geoengineered clouds anybody who's been watching the skies as I have for the past dozen years watching the perversion of our skies and what takes place in them knows how to immediately recognize true God-made clouds from these wicked aerosol-laden um, geoengineered clouds got some blue sky up there which is nice and again we'll head over in this direction folks we're living in the last days which on one hand sounds like bad news because we are going to suffer terrible persecution but I have to say it's on the other hand a relief that this world is going to be judged soon that our Lord and Savior is going to be returning soon and everything is going to change when our Lord and Savior returns to this world and condemns this world and prepares the world for his millennial reign during which he's going to rule with a, a rod of iron and those who are found worthy, those who are in Christ will be ruling and reigning alongside our Lord and Savior and I really look forward to that day I pray that our loving Father finds Catherine and me to be worthy I pray as well that you as fellow Bible believing Christians will be found to be worthy and that we will be ruling and reigning alongside Jesus Christ throughout that thousand years before the advent of New Jerusalem coming down from heaven like a bride adorned for her husband there's the castle and it's quite an incredible place really this it is a city, it's called the city of Sterling, but that's quite recent, um, just in the latter part of the 20th century, I believe, um, that it became a city, but it's a, a really nice place, actually. Nice hills. Catherine is saying it seems a little bit like a, a mini Edinburgh, um, and Edinburgh is the place where Catherine went to school, finished up her um, a levels or A level equivalents, I guess, in Scotland. And let's get a shot of that. So, folks, although we're living in the last days, I think it's also exciting because those of us who are true Bible believing Christians are inspired always by the, the gospel accounts of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but also the book of Acts and all that we get in Paul's epistles. Um, it's inspiring and encouraging to see the power that Jesus Christ endowed us with, the power and authority that Jesus Christ gave to all of his true disciples, and amazing power of the Lord was shown throughout that time. And we are on the opposite side of the of the history of this world. We're in the final chapter, ladies and gentlemen. So for those of us who are in Christ, those of us who have come to him through faith and trust, it's an exciting time to be alive. It's actually an incredible honor to be doing what we can for the Lord in this final chapter. Um, the Lord is going to show mighty works in this day and age. And I implore you all um, those of you who, are, who have come to Christ, um, ready yourselves for this day of um, reckoning ahead. Prepare yourself for the trials and tribulations that are sure to come. And those of you who are not yet in Christ, come out to the On Fire for God Today website and then go out to the Salvation page and you can learn about everything you need to know. And you can see on camera right now that our Lord and Savior our loving Father is opening up the skies as He so often does, opening up the skies with the sunshine. 
shining his light upon us. I just want you to see this. Take a look at what we have going across the top of this. We've got Jesus, Lord. We'll make our way all the way around. Yes. In us and also right here we've got etched into the stone. Don't know if you can make that out but it says glory to God. Over here it says in the highest. So glory to God in the highest. And we can see through the glass that it actually says Jesus. Jesus King, Judge. Jesus King, Judge, Savior. It is Christ in us. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, King, Judge, Savior, it is Christ in us. And if we go and take a look at this, it tells the story of a woman named Margaret Wilson, who, aged 18, was executed by drowning in the Solway Firth for refusing to renounce her Protestant faith. And some similar fate is going to be coming to all of us who have put all of our faith and trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Uh, but it's a small price to pay for the fact that He has given us everlasting life through all that He did on the cross, having paid for the sins of all mankind. And however we die, we pray that it glorifies our Lord and Savior, who likewise died a terrible death in torment, in humiliation, so that we who came after him and who came before him and who lived even during his day and age, um, so that we can live and live more abundantly and have life everlasting and no longer have to pay the wages of sin, which is death, death in this life and the death of the soul. Jesus Christ has come and he has saved us from that terrible fate and through him we can all live. And we look forward to the worlds to come. We are honored to be here, to be able to serve him in these last days. We can see the new world order unfolding before our very eyes and we lift up our Lord and Savior right now who as usual is shining his light, his loving light upon us showing us the beauty of his creation and we love him we glorify him and we thank you for watching this video and in jesus christ's mighty name we pray amen okay folks here we are actually at sterling castle um, of course it's completely closed because of the fake pandemic so we can't actually go inside um, but you can begin to see some of it. There's Catherine. Hello, Catherine. Anyways, it's been a completely unexpected day. This is not at all what we expected to do, uh, but it's been good. We like to just do things like this. Uh, there we go. Let me zoom back out again. Okay, so here's the surrounding countryside. Yet more cemetery down there and this beautiful tree and I'll walk over here you can actually see the gorse on that hillside that I was speaking of earlier sun shining on that one spot and you can see some of the yellow orange the gorse that's growing alongside those hills really nice and you can see that the ground has stepped up towards this castle and it's actually like a little village inside of the castle. It's a shame that we can't go in, um, but maybe one day we'll be able to. Maybe one day we'll be able to go in and see it. Where we used to live in Lewis, East Sussex, it also has a famous castle. Not nearly so big as this, 
uh, but we used to live quite quite close to it, right down the street from it. So if I back up here, you might be able to get a little bit more context. Over here is the um, church and that restored building that I was showing you on the other side of the cemetery and that Egyptian pyramid, Masonic symbol, right there. Now we're up above it. Um, but if I show you, you can see some of the roof line of the buildings that are inside of the fortified castle walls. And we're much, much higher up than the city of Sterling at this point. Um, it didn't really seem like much of a climb. It was just gradual, walking up the what essentially is the high street, I guess. And you can see some of the housing down below. And again, that hillside with the gorse. Anyways, folks, this is not what we intended to do today. But we thank our loving Father for giving us this day to be able to walk out here and to see something that we knew that we wanted to see. We didn't expect it to be today. This is King Robert the Bruce. And again, you can see some of the the roof lines of the buildings inside of the castle. I would love to be able to go back in time. It's one of the things that Catherine and I often talk about throughout our travels is just wishing that we could go back in time and just see things as they were in the day and just to move in and out of different periods of time. See things as they were in different time periods. All for now folks, we thank you again as always for watching our videos. We thank you for doing your part for the Kingdom of God. It's so important that we do all we can to share the gospel just before we stepped up um, here to the level of the castle. We were talking with an old gentleman who's been living in Sterling since 1990 and we gave him one of our gospel cards and explained that King James, um, who gave us the King James Bible of 1611, was crowned as an infant over in that church. And I'm sure he knew about King James, but he didn't know about the connection of the King James Bible. So um, I showed him our card and the King James Bible gospel verses on the back. And I pray that that makes a difference in his life, that he comes to Christ through the gospel, the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. This you can see is a big huge parking lot. Would be filled with tourists and tour buses presumably. Um, but it is completely quiet. Anyways folks, we love you. We thank you for everything. Thank you for your support of On Fire for God today. Uh, in Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen.